Hello everyone, it's Kiara Sheard and this is Madame Noir. When did I know that I was singing for myself and not just because mommy told me to? And I'll say 16 to maybe 20. Yeah, because, you know, I, before I wanted to do nails, I wanted to do hair, I wanted to do, I wanted to, I tried out for the tennis uh, thing, I didn't make that. I wanted to do everything else but singing, so I would say around that time, that's, that's when I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is what I want to do. My music is different uh, on this record that is coming soon from the last records that I've done. First of all, I think it's bigger. I've done more urban sounding songs and you'll get that, but you'll get a little mixture of it, but you'll definitely be able to hear that I listen to other genres of music. And I've kind of tried to have something new to offer, especially uh, when it comes to my generation. I think that a lot of Christian young people um, especially Christian African Americans, we go and look for the the creative juices and the, the, the meaty and fun stuff. It's like we get bored and we think that every time we talk about God, it's a mountain that has to be moved. That's not all that comes with God. And so I want to have that to offer, but with the creative stuff so that we're not always seeking for what we're lacking maybe uh, from other genres of music. But the expectations that come along with being a preacher's kid I can definitely say they expect you to be perfect, um, but God doesn't even expect us to be perfect. And I think that's the beautiful thing about knowing your God and not just depending on religion, but kind of going off of relationship. Uh, and then you kind of have to not just, they, we encourage each other to live our lives for ourselves, but if you're not a selfish, if you're a selfless person, you want to consider your father, your mother, especially when they're leaders in the church, because it can it can kind of affect their ministry. It could kind of plant seeds in the minds of their congregation, you know, those kind of things. So it's it, it's. It's I wouldn't say that's negative, um, but it, it definitely challenges me to walk with integrity and to live my life with integrity. So I kind of would say it's a blessing and a curse. It's not a curse, it's a blessing, but it can be a problem sometimes. <laughs> I was over 300 pounds before and uh, I always had to wear boy clothes and eventually I had to, my grandmother told me one day, uh, you gonna have to stop eating so much. And I appreciated that because it, I think she could have said it better, <laughs> but um, it helped me because it showed me that I didn't have self-discipline. I was just eating, you know, you're just eating everything. You're just eating your life away, basically. <laughs> I lost over 80 pounds. Yes, and I did it naturally. First of all, I talked to a doctor, and um, she just immediately said, if you take out carbs and sugars, I hate exercising, that's a, that's a problem. But she said, if you take out carbs and sugars, you'll lose this weight. I had a surgery, and the surgery that I had was for the plus size women that may be thinking about getting a weight loss surgery. It's not the weight loss surgery what I had, it's a cosmetic surgery. And that surgery got rid of the skin you know, our skin is like elastic, so if you stretch it out at some point, it's like our, you know how you got your favorite pair of stretchy jeans, if you keep wearing at the, after a while in the butt part, it's gonna be like that little saggy part. So that's what happened with my body. I stretched it out. I was 300 pounds and wearing 24s and 26, and now I wear a 16. So I've had all of this skin, and you can work out as, and I did try to work out, but that wasn't working. And um, so I just got some, skin cut off and I made some adjustments. The doctor made me think of it really well. It's like a broken down house and you just get some things fixed up. I think it encourages the church or the religious community to stop putting leaders on a pedestal. Um, and I think, I, I commend the, the pastors that are on that show because they give us an opportunity to see them kind of expose themselves before God has to expose them or shut them down, if that makes sense. Not saying, and, I, and I'm not saying when I use the term exposed, I'm not using it as you're exposing something bad. It's just showing that I'm human and I have desires that you have. And just because I'm a leader of a church, that does not change my desire. That doesn't change my natural or flesh desire. 
So I love that about the show. I get from this generation, we love art. We love creativity. We love, you know, I get the nerds some here and there, and it's nothing wrong with being a nerd, but I get a, that we, we're creative beings. God ain't give us a, a, a small waist and big hips for nothing. Not saying that we gotta go wearing booty shorts and all that, but I think it's a way to dress and to attract a male it, it, but your, your, your attire should speak that I'm a woman of class, of grace, a woman of God, and I still can look good. Don't no man want no woman always covered up, you know? It's a plus size hosiery line, and it's more, it's affordable, and you'll have it at a convenience store. And, uh, but you're gonna get that control top stuff. And you know how we can't always run to the mall. First of all, the mall don't open in time for us to get stockings to go to church. Right. So we always gotta run to Walgreens or, you know, wherever. And so you'll be able to go to Walgreens and get the control stuff so you can wear your fitted pencil skirt but still look like a lady, but your stuff is controlled. And it's called Cheers by Sheared. Isn't that cute?